Hey everybody, one of their Infinity Code 1 Battle Reports. I'm back today with another new faction to try out in Code 1, the O12. Now, if you're not familiar with Infinity, O12 is kind of like a governing body working under the AI um, that uh, sort of just makes sure the mega corporations get along. Uh, so narratively speaking, if we're talking about Operation Caldstrom, uh, there's been some aggression on the part of Yu Ching on to Pan Oceania, and I imagine they called the space cops to stop him. So we're going through mission two in um, the Code 1 rulebook, the full rulebook which is domination. Now domination, there's a variant of this that's um, pretty similar in, in main body N3 Infinity, which I'm sure will be in N4 Infinity 2 called Supremacy. You're basically trying to dominate quadrants, so that is to have more victory points for the models at the end of each game round. There's three game rounds. Uh, to score points, if you tie your opponent, you get one point. If you um, have more dominated quadrants at the end of each round, you get two points for potentially six in the mission. Then there's also four consoles in the table. These objectives, um, don't block line of sight if they're they're pieces of like cardboard, which they are in this case. They're coming from the calcium box. Um, but if you're in contact with one and you're a specialist, you can make a willpower check. Certain specialists get bonuses um, and you connect the console. Now, if someone comes along later on from the opposing side and connects the console, it'll flip back um, and you get one objective point for each console connected to the end of the game. So 25 point mission, we're playing on a four by three. Uh, I'm using the Salvora Governmental Complex Pack in addition to the Calstrom Terrain uh, for a nice sort of like selection of two boxes for the terrain on a 4x3 mat. The mat is from GameMat.eu, but just word of the wise, it's a six foot mat that I cut in half because uh, I'm crazy and because it fit the theme of this mission. So uh, <laughs> we'll try the two forces. Uh, this is, O12 is an interesting force. They are real good at doing stuff. And so you don't get a lot of models. Um, I could have made the list with 10 models, but then I wouldn't have got to include the really cool Omega and the Omega is like amazing. So <laughs> I wanted to be able to use the coolest models. That's kind of the point of code one. Um, and when we do eventually graduate to 30 point games, when I have a, a live body opponent back, um, I will have the models to add to, to make it a full 30 points. But uh, this was the, the eight points or the eight models and uh, 25 points I wanted to start with. So again, I'll show you the factions. We'll show you the table and we'll get this underway. So here's 25 points of O12. Now there are eight models in this, and this is basically the um, Operation Wildfire O12 stuff, plus the Beyond Wildfire. Um, the other available stuff like the Alpha Unit and Team Sirius, they're not available in um, Code 1 because there's no rules for like uh, synced models and the larger base stuff. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, and these guys are, are roughly they're exactly 25 points and 4.5 SWC, special weapon cost. Um, the alternates I have, I have two more Kappas that come in the box set and a Delta Hacker. Um, and they add up to the exactly uh, 4.5 that the Omega is. But the Omega is like an amazing ODD or Mimetism minus six heavy infantry with an HMG. It wasn't, an, uh, wasn't a hard trade off. <laughs> so, what else do I have? I have Hippolyta, who is a um, just a killing machine in melee. She's got martial arts level four, Mimetism, um, Dodge, and Super Jump. So, Super Jump is a new rule you haven't seen yet in uh, Code 1. But much like Climbing Plus, it allows the jump skill, which is normally a long skill to move your first movement uh, kind of up and anywhere. Um, it allows you to do it as a short skill. So she can jump up on stuff and still fight or charge or whatever, which makes her highly mobile. You just measure the direction you want to put her and 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 put her down. <laughs> and then she has a breaker combi, which is um, a combi rifle that uh, goes against BTS instead of armor and halves it, it's AP. Uh, and a nanopulsor, which is like a BTS light flamethrower. So it's a small template that goes against your BTS at damage 13. Uh, then I got the Gamma, which is the, the ginormo guy here in the middle. Um, he's also my lieutenant. And he's got a Fuhrbach, which is a kind of... Think of the Fuhrbach as like an anti-material rifle. It only fires twice normally, but he's got a special skill where he gets plus one burst to his BS attack. He's a BS attack skill. So he's actually firing it three times, um, which in the, the N3 terms is called full auto. It's just plus one burst now because we're unnesting skills, which is sweet. Um, and he is crazy, crazy, crazy tough. He is uh, BS 14, arm six, BTS six with two wounds, and he's size five, which is why he's enormous. He's five points at 1.5 SWC. Um, so he's a he's a mean, lean killing machine. And uh, the Fuhrbach is damage 15 with AP plus DA. So every hit is two armor rolls and it halves your armor, which is, you know, representative of the fact that it's a, it's a giant anti-material gun. <laughs> and he's super cool. Uh, Cap in the back there with a pistol, she's a paramedic. Uh, it's the only doctor I have in this list. And then the um, the Omega back there, that's this guy on the left-hand side, he has uh, Mimetism at minus six and an HMG. And also pretty amazing stats, BS 14. He's armor four, not six, but he still has two wounds, BTS three. Um, he's like a lighter version of the uh, the Omega. 
or sorry, the, the Gamma, rather. Then there's a Gangbuster, this dude right here with the shotgun. Uh, he's got a boring shotgun, he's Mimetism minus three, he's got Infiltration, and he's a multi spectral Visor level one, so he's good at like seeing stuff. And then Quervo Goldstein with the other boring shotgun. Here's a Jump Troop, he's a Parachutist. Special character, he's martial arts level four with a boarding shotgun, combat jump, um, and he's pretty, I mean, he's pretty good. He's only got one wound, but he's armor three, uh, BTS zero, and BS 13, CC 23. So he's pretty good at punching stuff. He's a monofilament hookless count weapon, which just kills you, like a lightsaber. Um, and then the Epsilon back here with his sniper rifle and the kind of like dead space helmet, he's my multi-spectral visor level two. He's got mimetism minus three, big, big multi-sniper rifle on a nanopulsar. Pretty tough, he's kind of like the, um, the O12 equivalent of the Nice from uh, from the um, actually he's almost exactly like Denise, almost like dead the same exactly <laughs> um, as the Nice from Pano, and then almost my favorite model is the Beta Trooper here. This little guy he's a chappy. He's a little chappy bot, uh, and he's got limitism minus three, dodge plus three. Um, He's heavy infantry, so he's got armor three and two wounds. But another new rule is instead of having a wound structure, uh, wounds actually he has a structure stat, which means the paramedic can't help him. He's a robot, um, and he's got a, uh, a multi rifle and a nano pulsar with two bursts. Uh, it's plus one burst, and he's pretty great. And he's got climbing plus as well, just like uh, what's his name, um, Gunner did, so he can climb up walls. And over here, you know that we love him. It's the uh, the Code One Yu Ching. We got the Hack Tao Hacker, uh, Tiger Soldier Paramedic, and then three Zanshi Paramedics: the Hundun Sniper, the Guilang Boarding Shotgun, um, Adil, and uh, the Jujak. And then in the middle there, of course, Lieutenant Dao Fei with his Spitfire. And here's a table set up for domination. Once again, trying to create uh, asymmetrical deployment zones, so slightly better deployment zone with rooftops over here. Um, and there are one, two, three, four consoles and four quadrants. The quadrants are basically the areas outside your deployment zone. Um, so everything 12, more than 12 inches up uh, and then to the middle of the table, there's four quadrants. They basically surround these four consoles. And that's what you're trying to dominate. So let's do a deployment roll or initiative roll rather. Uh, purple funky 012 dice. Uh, they roll a 1 and pass, the 16 will fail for the willpower of um, 14 on the Yu Cheng, which means that O12 can decide. I think O12 just wants to go first. Deployment and deployment zones. Uh, Yu Cheng will choose this uh, nice deployment zone over here and force O12 to deploy on this side. All right, so holding back the Omega, uh, Quiver of course off board in the beginning. We've got the Epsilon here on the steps. Infiltrating Gangbuster prone behind this wall right here next to a console. Uh, you have the Beta Trooper hanging out with Hippolyta in the center, uh, climbing plus and super jump, meaning they can just get over this building if they want to. Uh, and then finally, the Omega's hanging out, or sorry, the Gamma rather is hanging out with the uh, the paramedic who can go push that console button while he defends. Like the Hack Tao, uh, Yu Ching deploys Adel and um, the paramedic Zan Shi here, prone. Prone paramedic Zan Shi with a prone Hundun, uh, prone um, Dao Fei, who's also, of course, a lieutenant, and then Jujak and the uh, those who should be tucked in there. Jujak and the other uh, paramedic hang out in the flank with the infiltrating Wee Lang uh, in the center. And so that means the Omega has to deploy. So Yu Ching's deployed. We have Adil and the um, Zanshi paramedic on the rooftop here, both prone. And then the Hundun sniper and um, other paramedic prone on this rooftop. Uh, we have the Jujak with the last paramedic behind this wall, ready to assault the console. And then a Wee Lang um, skirmisher with boarding shotgun. Uh, in Camel State infiltrating, and the uh, Dao Fei also infiltrating, prone on this rooftop. So the Omega Reserve Mini gets to deploy, he's going to hang out behind the Epsilon over here, and then that means it's time for the Hack Tao to deploy, who was reserved. Hmm, Just to keep him safe for now, so he's going to hang out behind this wall. So it's turn one, domination, and order count for O12. There are eight models uh, total, but only seven on the table, because Cuervo's not here. So that's two, four, six, seven orders, plus lieutenant order. The Ching player, Wazi deploying prone, uh, does mean that it's gonna be way too order intensive, really, for O12 to get them this turn and start killing them. Um, but it does give O12 the opportunity to position themselves to dominate a bunch of zones and click a bunch of buttons. And so that's what they're probably gonna do this round. So one of the first is gonna go to this cow paramedic who will stand up, no one with line of sight to them at the moment. Um, and use her first short skill to take a walk four inches, and that'll get her into contact with this console. As the second half of that short skill, she is going to um, attack that console with a, uh, a hack console action. It's a unique action for this mission, and it can be done by any specialist. She's a paramedic, so she qualifies. Um, and that means she gets to make a roll on her willpower, normal willpower roll, and if she does, she connects it for her side. She does with a three. So put that die there, and you see that's marked by... O12. There's six orders remaining. 
So <laughs> it looks like we're probably best off continuing this strategy um, of early pushing buttons and getting positions. So we're going to go with the beta troop. Uh, beta troop can climb plus, doesn't need to though, can just hurdle this because it's shorter than his silhouette and move four inches forward. Uh, no arrows, everyone's prone, can't see, so he'll just go again and head towards this console. Right, and the beta troop is going to move, it looks like three inches, touch the console. And he has the specialist trooper uh, tag, so he'll move one inch afterwards up to here. Will power 13, so let's see if he connects the console for his side. Crits it, so that is now connected. We successfully connected a grand total of two consoles and gotten a bunch of points into this zone. So what we need to do now with our remaining four orders and our lieutenant order is get these models that are in the wind out of the wind and also set up our defenses. So I think the first thing to do is get this beta trooper not in the wind anymore. Um, he is fairly robust. He has a uh, mimetism minus three and he could put some fire on either the Dao Fei or this Hunden sniper if they decide to get up. But he only moved eight inches with this third order. So where he wants to be is fairly important. I'm thinking this corner right here probably is best. And it'll also allow him to threaten that last console. So he's gonna hold it down for his homies and hopefully uh, make sure he's facing all the relevant directions, so across like this, be able to defend that position. So three orders left and a lieutenant order and we really wanna move Hippolyta, the Epsilon, the Omega, and the Gamma. Um, so we have exactly enough orders to do what we want to do. So first the Epsilon really needs to take up positions being able to see stuff. Uh, so gain order with that MSV2. He's going to walk up four inches to the top of this stairwell. Everyone prone, he won't be able to see anyone behind all the barriers. So second skill, he's just going to move himself actually around to over here. So he can only really vector a couple models at a time. Should keep him safe and be able to pick off individual models as we go. I'm particularly worried about the hack tower over there. The Omega's actually fairly happy where he is for the moment because he's in cover, he's touching this thing, and he's fairly safe for most advances. So I think we're going to move on to Hippolyta, and she's going to take a walk. For a short skill, she's going to move four over to here. And then second short skill, she's going to move four into this corner right here, and just watch all the avenues of advance. Order and Lieutenant are left. It's pretty hard to hide the Gamma. He needs to be somewhere important, but I also don't want to lose that... Um, there's a boarding shotgun nearby and I don't want to lose that paramedic. One of the reasons why I stood this guy up to be able to see that corner right there is I don't want that paramedic coming to kill, or that uh, boarding shotgun coming to kill the, um, the Fuhrbach. So I feel pretty good actually about where everyone is right now, but that camel marker could surprise shot me. So I'm actually tempted to move the gamma or the uh, yeah the gamma backwards as well as the paramedic, and so I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give uh, another regular order. We're gonna leave the omega where he is, and we're gonna move a, a, the paramedic back, going four inches. Actually, we're we're gonna hurdle this to here, and then our second skill we're gonna go two inches, but we're gonna go prone, just hang out on this doorstep, being prone. And so last but not least, we use our lieutenant order because obviously both players know who the lieutenant is on the gamma, and the gamma is just gonna step back. Four inches to here. And just watch the advance. Turn 1012. So I managed to put points in the zones. So we've got Hippolyta and this paramedic in this zone. We've moved the beta trooper up into this zone. And we've also got the um, Epsilon and the, uh, the Gangbuster in that zone. So one, two, three zones being threatened right now, which gives the Yu Ching some problems for this turn. No order count Yu Ching. Uh, we've got the Tiger Soldier off table. So there's two, four, six, eight, nine regular orders in the order pool, plus Lieutenant Order. Things to be dealt with. Well, the Hunden Sniper is not gonna be able to see the Epsilon, I don't think. Oh, no, he probably will. If she, wants to, if she wants to get up and shoot him, she could, but he'll be ignoring her camouflage. She'll just have surprise shot. Um, and her cover on her side. It's not a, the worst deal. She'll be active turn, which is kind of cool. It does solve a problem. Um, most of the other models are prone, so hard to see her hiding behind walls. The only issue is right now if the Hunden stands up, the beta trooper is going to fight her as well. So a couple ways that they could deal with this beta trooper, and I think Yu Jing's best bet right now to deal with the beta trooper is probably going to be the hack tau. It's simple, given the hack tau in order, and it will move four inches over to here. Not getting in line of fire. Second, we'll have a peek around the corner at the beta troop. Of course, not being a stupid robot, the beta troop decides to delay its ARO and see what happens. And of course, the hacktail hacker will reveal itself and fire its multi rifle. 
both sides within 16, um, both having multi-rifles. Uh, the multi-rifle will fire back, and it's an opposed test, BS-14, um, plus 3 for range, minus 6 for mimetism and cover. So it's going to be 11s overall with 3 dice AP. Trooper will fire back with an anti-material round, because why not do the DA round instead? I could do the AP round, but 2 rolls is almost always better than a single roll. So. Um, with the DA round firing back, it's going to be BS 13, plus 3 for range, but minus 9. So hitting on 7s. So 7s to 11. Uh, the 6 will hit, the 11 will crit, and the 12 will totally miss, as will the 18. Crit, that's 3 armor rolls, AP, from the uh, the shots from the Hacktow. Now, the um, Beta Troopers armor 3, have to 2, because you round up, and then plus 3 for cover. So grand total of armor 5 against damage 13, you have to beat an 8 three times. 2012 19, that's gonna do it. So he laughs in robots. Max had decides to try again. Um, actually, he would have had the surprise shot as well uh, for minus three, I just realized. But it didn't matter because he missed no matter what. Um, so, same as before, it's gonna be three shots on 11s. Uh, it would have been a four actually, now it's back to being a seven for the beta trooper. 20's gonna miss, another critical hit, and then two misses for the Hacktow. Again, two more armor rolls on eight. And a 17 and a 13, the beta trooper left. From Chappie, I don't know, one more try. This guy's got to get removed for the hunting to do his job. So again, 7 to 11. Uh, that's a 2 to hit, and the 12 will miss. So one more hit, one more armor roll. Uh, beat an 8. 5 takes a move. On to his 5th order now, the Hacktack keeps trying. And once again, the beta trooper could shoot back or he could dodge. In this case, he dodges at plus 3, so his physical will be 15. He's going to try and dodge this time instead of shooting back. Eight will pass, uh, but the two nines will cancel it. So that's two more armor rolls, having to beat an eight. The three will put him unconscious. Act having done his job, the Hunden can now give a try to take an at this sniper. So standing up as part of his first short move skill, the Epsilon takes an eye at him and decides he's going to, of course, wait. Uh, and then the Wily Yu Ching player, instead of firing, moves his camo token to the edge. Of course, this causes no further ARO, um, but wisely, the Yuching player has now moved those points into the zone on that first order. Second order, it just moves again, to slide out slightly, back to here, keeping along cover. The Epsilon, still able to see at the beginning of the move, decides that they will once again delay their ARO. There's no way this, uh, this feint could happen twice, and they're right. The Hunden decides to make a BS stack and reveals itself. We'll have Surprise on its side, plus cover. Multi-Spectral Visor level 2 will ignore the um, Mimitism minus 3. So two shots AP into the uh, Epsilon. It'll get to shoot back once. DA. Might as well do an anti-material round if you're going to return fire. So um, it will be good range over 16, so plus 3. And then minus 3 for cover. Um, so just hitting on a 13 for the Epsilon. Uh, 13 for the Hundun, plus 3, minus 3 as well, but minus 3 again for the Mimetism on the Epsilon. So that's going to be a grand total of um, 10s. So 10s on the 2 dice to 13s on the 1. Oof, miss miss, and the 12 will land, so that's a DA. Hundun has to make 2 armor rolls against damage 15, because uh, of DA. And its armor is, I believe, 3. Yep, 3 goes to 6 for cover. So 15 goes down to a 9. 10 plus, twice. No, death's dead. It gets its head blown off by the Epsilon. Paramax not fixing that. <laughs> Super dead. Two orders remain, so the important thing now is getting more points into the zone. First for Adil, he's just going to take a move, and he's going to crawl, going forward and forward. He doesn't want to get in the line of fire of the Epsilon. So just heading to the edge here, but that will put him into the uh, the quadrant to score. Each player needs to make a choice here. The Epsilon is causing problems, and also this gangbuster is in the zone. They've managed to take out the, um, the Beta Trooper, and without an Engineer, there's no way he's coming back. So with the Lieutenant up here having two orders to himself remaining, one that he could use a uh, plus Lieutenant order, there is the chance that he could take this Epsilon out with his, um, his uh, whatchamacallit, his Spitfire. But he'd have to deal with this shotgun at the same time, unfortunately, because he's going to be up high. The other option is he could sneak over to here and try and kill this paramedic. Um, of course, that would put him in super jump range of Hippolyta, and also revealed, which doesn't sound ideal. And so the final choices could be to move the Jujak uh, into the zone and try and score the zone to at least tie it up. The only problem with that is, actually there's no problem with that, uh, if he crosses too far, he's going to see the... Gamma, and that will cause problems because the Gamma's Fearbach is pretty nasty. 
Last option is to try and get the hack tau somewhere relevant, like into this zone, which would also tie it up. And that seems like the best bet at this point. Other options are to move the, hmm, to move the, using Lieutenant Order, to move the crawling Dao Fei over here, which would make sense. And with one order remaining, because that way this score, this zone is scored and this zone is scored. Hmm. One order remaining, I think we just move Hack Tao back to here. Make it relevant for next turn. Well, the Hunden was lost, but they managed to get the Beta Trooper. And that pushes end of round scoring to one each, as this zone will be held, but or this zone will be held by the Dao Fei, and the um, uh, zone over here will be held by Adil, and then this zone will be held by the um, Gangbuster, and this zone will be held by Hippolyta and the um, Kappa, who certainly outweigh the Guilang. Move, so it can't be in that zone anyway, so, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Uh, so it's one each, so score goes to 1-1 one, one for end of round. It's round two for 012, down to six orders, unfortunately, having lost the beta trooper. So with a relatively safe landing zone over here, Cuervo decides to arrive, and he's gonna jump down right here behind this wall from the cow marker and also at line of fire the Jujack. That uses his own order, he can now take an order to walk to the edge here, slide along the wall, and look at this cow marker. Cow marker is going to be at minus six to hit, but plus three for range with a willpower of three. So it's 50-50, it gets discovered. It has to make a choice right now. Does it not ARO and forgo its ARO and chance being discovered with this second skill or do they just get in a shotgun fight? I think we get in a shotgun fight. 50-50's never good odds, so Cuervo and the, um, the Guilang deciding to get in a point blank range shotgun fight, both declaring the use of templates. So Cuervo is BS 13. Um, he'll be plus six for range and then minus six for cover and the camo mimetism modifier. Um, the Guilang is 11 plus 6 and then also minus uh, 3 for cover. So he'll go to a 14 overall versus the, um, the 13 for the Beta Trooper. Or sorry, for Aquervo. Let's see if he gets it. So the 19 is going to miss. Uh oh. And that means the 2 and the 4 both land, uh, ignoring the partial cover modifier because it's a template. And that means the Guilang has an armor of one, is gonna have to make two armor rolls versus a 14. So he has to roll 15s twice. Oh, sorry, 13s twice. But a six and a nine won't do it. And he just gets obliterated by the shotgun. The Epsilon, out of line of fire of the Dao Fei now, decides that they will take a step out with an order and gain line of sight to it. So now the Dao Fei has to decide, do they want to risk this being spotted? They're in the open right now. So it's a zero mod willpower of, uh, for the Epsilon, 13. So it's a, basically a straight 13 to see if it's spotted or not. And those odds don't feel very good. So the Dao Fei decides to reveal itself and shoot. No longer having to discover, the um, Epsilon decides to shoot back. Just two shots at AP, or sorry, yeah, AP versus one shot um, with a Spitfire. Spitfire will be plus three for range, minus three for cover and mimetism. Um, so minus three overall. So it's going to be on a 10, then two shots at 13, um, probably within 16, uh, so no modifier. Definitely within 16, definitely within two of these. So 13s for the blue dice, and the, or the purple dice, and then a 10 for the orange. That's a miss, and then two AP rounds, having the armor of three down to two. Uh, versus damage 15, so that's going to be 15 minus 2 is 13, 14 twice to beat it. Does one, just takes one wound. Having successfully revealed him, the Epsilon's pretty happy with where they are, and it's time to unleash the Omega. So the Omega taking an order, and then walking four up the stairs, won't quite be able to gain line of sight to the Dao Fei just yet, as it's only just peeking over the top of this. Battles, and then another order to walk to the top step and maintain contact with the cover. Dao Fei is not excited about fighting a minus six mimetism uh, fellow with a machine gun. So he decides he's going to dodge instead of um, shooting back. Because then he'll be dodging on a 14. One die on a 14 versus four heavy machine gun dice. Uh, inside 16 though. So that's going to be no modifiers. Uh, except for the mimetism of minus three. So uh, zero minus three. That's going to take 14 out of an 11. So four dice on an 11 versus one die on a 14. Uh, and the sixes will cancel, and that's it. Uh, second to last order to try again for the Omega. Once again, trying to dodge, because he wants to get a line of fire, or at least into cover. The 15 will fail, and then all but the nine will hit. So that's one armor roll, armor three against the heavy machine gun's 15, so it has to be a 12. 
does not. Unconscious. Probably there's results. Another regular order on the Omega. He's just gonna step back down at a line of fire. Back to the wall to stay safe. And there's just the lieutenant order left. The shotgun down, the uh, Gamma is gonna happily take a walk around to this wall and watch for that Jujack. Happy with their round two performance. Uh, it's back over to Yu Chang, who just took a bit of a beating. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the um, Tiger Soldier off table. No lieutenant order. It's gonna be an interesting round, but the hack time needs to get to work. So the way to do that is to spend an order to re-camouflage, get himself hiding again. From there, it's a move in the line of fire of the Epsilon to here. The Epsilon could delay, but, or discover, but it's unlikely that the Hacktail is gonna try and fight him from this distance. So instead he decides that he's gonna try and discover. It'll be minus uh, three just for cover. So on a 10 or less, the Epsilon spots him. Fails on a 20, can't try and spot him again. The Hacktail decides just to move. It's staying in contact with the cover. Uh, another order. Hack time moves up. Going four. Salon's blind now, um, and he's too close to that cover to be able to see, which makes the hack tile pretty much invincible. Salon could try and dodge or delay. That's not just going to delay because he can't do a discover test again this turn. Hack tile simply moves again. Heads over to this side. Hmm. Heads over to this side. Can we get there one move? Yeah, we can. Third order, Hacktail's just gonna slide over, hurdle this. Uh, or stay where they are, stay where they are, just slide around. Epsilon decides to delay ARO, and the Hacktail reveals itself and fires. So it's a multi-rifle, uh, cover is not going to be in the, like actually touched in the way. That means that the Epsilon's only gonna have its mimetism. So plus three for range, minus three for the mimetism, uh, which is gonna land a 14 for the multi-rifle here. And then shooting back with a sniper rifle, zero for range, but minus nine for cover, uh, minus three for surprise, and minus six for mimetism is gonna put him on a one. So it's probably better for him to dodge in this case. Because he delayed his ARO, he's able to try choose afterwards. Uh, dodge an 11. And it'll be that versus the 14s from the multi-rifle. So a 1 will pass, but get cancelled by the 8 and the 11. He's going to take 2 rounds for multi-rifle. AP having his armor to 2. No cover, so we have to beat an 11 twice. Nope, just straight dead. So happy with the points he's put into the zone. The hack is going to wait there for a minute. I think the Tiger Soldier is going to arrive. He is safe to arrive right here. Cuervo could attempt to change facing, um, as he will be in zone of control. His other option is to land right here, be totally in a line of fire of the Gamma and Cuervo. Sorry, but he's still in zone of control. So zone of control, Cuervo's gonna attempt to turn around. Go 13, does he do it? No, he fails, uh-oh. He ordered the Tiger Soldier now, and he will go prone and slide out of view to here. Uh, Cuervo could attempt to dodge again because he's inside zone of control and that's all he can do because he doesn't have a line of fire. Um, and he will open up with his combo. There's BS 13, plus 3 for range, minus 3 for the cover Cuervo's in. So it's 13's on 3 dice versus 1 dodge on a 13 as well. 18's going to fail and Cuervo's going to take 3 rounds from the combi rifle. Damage 13, Cuervo's armor is 3 plus cover to 6, he has to beat a 7 3 times. Takes one round and goes unconscious. So with two orders left, we have the Hacktail and the Tiger Soldier in position to threaten some models. Now the Tiger Soldier could go and push that, that console as well, which is fairly important at the end of the turn. Um, and then position them somewhere to try and stay alive in this zone, because right now they're holding the zone. Um, over here, the Hacktail is definitely holding this zone, but could maybe threaten this one. He's used six points. Actually, between the two of them, actually, I think they're out, they outgun him. So if he can kill this Gangbuster, he might be able to score the zone at the end of the round. That's what we're gonna try. He's in the back arc of the gangbuster, which means he can safely hop, but he might not actually, he won't be able to see that. So just hop this to here, and then stay at a line of fire, the end of his move. The gangbuster can attempt to dodge. The choice here is, does the hacked out fire his nanopulsar, which if the dodge is successful, just gets canceled, or attempt to shoot his multi-rifle, that'll be minus nine because of uh, the mimetism and the, uh, the, whatchamacallit, the mimetism, actually my, my six, mimetism and cover. Uh, he'd be on 11s, yeah, he'll just shoot his multi-rifle. So three shots on 11s versus one dodge from the gangbuster on a 10. Does he make it? 
Uh, he fails, and then one hit from the multi rifle. It's damage 13, having the Gangbuster's armor of 1 to 1, because rounding up. Uh, and then plus 3 for cover, so that'll be armor 4, B to 9. It does. So you can turn to face now, because he got around and survived. So last order is down to the Tiger Soldier, who is just going to move, move around the back here and hope for this console to be pushed next turn. Scoring end of the round, both sides holding two zones, one, two, and one, two, and that will take it to two, two. As they both tie, they both gain one. That's the last round of the game, round three. The pressure really is on to defend these consoles from the 012 side as they're as they're both scoring, and also to try and take one additional zone this round. Order count, Cuervo's shown up. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five uh, total, because Cuervo got, got knocked out. Feels like the best bet for the job here is gonna be Hippolyta. She really needs to mosey on over here and try and kill this Hacktile. The other option is for Lieutenant Omega, or Gamma to do that. And I think that's what we're gonna start off with, getting him in Lieutenant order. He has to slide out to do this. He's gonna slide along this cover, so you can see the Hacktile down here. Now the Hacktile's a choice. Uh, he'll have to shoot it pretty bad mods. It'll be minus three for range, and then minus three for cover, so be on, a grand total of uh, eights to hit with his multi-rifle with a single DA shot or AP shot. Um, or he could dodge on a 14. Now the fear block will be minus nine, but plus three for range, and that'll put him at minus six for eights as well, but three shots. You know, 14 seems like a better proposition, so three shots from the fear block on eights versus one dodge on a 14. And he'll completely miss, and the dodge will succeed, which means that the hack tile can go prone, and back up the step to be a line of fire. Was worth a shot. So five regular orders, and the Hacktown now pretty entrenched in this zone. The other option is try and take the Tiger Soldier out, but the Jujak will come afterwards. Hippoly is gonna need at least three orders to engage in melee, and she only has a DA close combat weapon, so there's a chance that she won't be able to just kill the heavily armored Hacktow. Now, she went the other way. She can get up on this rooftop and just throw her points into the zone. Uh, and that would force the Jujak and the paramedic to come out. Finally, there is always the, the possibility of just applying shotgun, and applying shotgun is never a terrible idea. It would leave this zone, well, still contested by him, so I think that might be our choice right now. Come in order the gangbuster, he'll stand up, and with four inches of movement, he'll easily make it to this corner to come see the Hacktow. So Hacktow has to make a choice. Once again, he could nano pulse her to auto hit, uh, or he could try and contest the shotgun by either dodging on a 14 or shooting um, with his multi-rifle on an 11. Dodge does feel like the best bet. Dodge could put him in melee, and you have to fight the gangbuster in melee. And he is slightly better than the gang, actually he's significantly better than the gangbuster in melee. So Dodge is on a 14 uh, versus two boarding shotgun shots with a template at minus nine, but plus six. So the gangbuster goes to a nine. Two shots on nine versus one dodge on a 14. 19 will fail and the nine will crit and then the eight will also hit. So that's three armor rolls that the hack has to make. Armor five, no cover because of the template. Um, and that means having to beat a nine three times. Beats him, beats it three times and he's fine. Worked so great this time, why not try again? Uh, just staying where he is, sliding around a little bit. Uh, hack again deciding to dodge. So on a nine versus the boarding shotgun uh, with a 14 dodge. So the dodge succeeds, but then, uh, and actually beats this. I, I rolled the wrong color dice for each guy. Um, so he'll get the dodge into melee, which will stick the gangbuster. Instead of going in melee, which might not be the best idea, because Hippolyta could then just like freely run towards us, he could also just back up. And that's what he'll do, stay prone and back up. Well, gangbuster, one more try. Uh, one dodge on a 14 versus two shots on eights, sorry, nines. Uh, the 6 will once again successfully dodge, the 13 will fail, and the 5 will get cancelled. So he'll just keep moving back. Stand in a line of fire. Only two orders left. We need to get in position just to cover everything. So, with that said, we're going to move the Omega. And he's just going to hurdle up to here to watch every possible position from this corner. Mm, from this corner. Nah, from over here, actually. And then Hippolyta is going to super jump to do much the same thing. She can go four up and over with her first short skill. Uh, no one in line of fire. And then her second short skill, she's just going to move to this edge and touch the cover. If anyone wants to come out, they got to fight everybody. It's round three for the O12. They've got two connected consoles and they put points into pretty much every zone. Order count it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven now um, for Yu Ching. No one really wants to fight the Omega or Hippolyta, but there's probably not going to be much of a choice. First things first. 
Order the Hacktile. Uh, he's just gonna slide slightly forward, staying prone, looking at this gangbuster. Active turn, he's gonna dial up his multi-rifle for some shots. So three shots, uh, 14, plus three for range, minus six for cover and mimetism. Three shots on 11s versus uh, Hacktile and cover, one boarding shotgun shot with a template on a nine. Uh, the five will hit, the ten will miss, he'll take one round, so he'll have to make a save of uh, AP, he's only armor one, so plus cover for four, it's a beat a nine. Eleven, he's good. Fry again, staying where he is. Three shots on eleven versus one shot on a nine. Uh, the ten will miss, and the seven and the ten will both hit. So two more armor rolls, trying to beat a nine. Uh, nine and a four, he'll just die. In order, he's got to go fight Hippolyta, crawling down a little bit to see her. And she's got a choice to make. She can dodge or she can shoot back. She's not going to be very good at shooting back. She'll be at minus six. That's going to give her a seven to hit. So dodging feels like a better idea on a physical of 14. She's awesome if it's minus six. Uh, she doesn't have cover from this angle though. So minus six uh, plus three for range for his multi rifle. So that's going to be on an 11 for the hack tau using AP rounds uh, versus a dodge on a 14 for Hippolyta. 10. And seven gets canceled, and she'll make a dodge. She's gonna go her two inches, and then drop down. Best way to stay alive, make him fight the Omega. Another order, slide out, see the Omega. He's got one shot back, zero for range, minus nine for cover and mimetism. So he's gonna be from a 14 down to a eight. He really just wants to dodge and keep this guy, because he's gotta stop a dill and, hmm, do you even care about that right now? Gotta stop a deal, I think. He's gonna dodge on his 14. Uh, shooting back, he'll be at minus nine plus three as well. So it's gonna be minus six. So an eight with three AP shots versus one dodge on a 14. Uh, so the three will hit and cancel the one. And that means that he'll have to make an armor roll. Armor four um, for the Omega goes to seven against the multi-rifle. So, sorry, armor four goes to two. Plus three is five. It's to beat an eight. He's good. More important things then. Um, she's going to move to the edge here with Hippolyta down, staying on this side so that the Gamma can't see her, and then spend uh, action to try and beat the Gonzo. 13, she fails. Second last order to do it again. Willpower 13, she passes. And that one's connected for Yu Chang. Last order of the game. Well, Hacktow, you're going to have to do this because I think this is the only way you tie it up. You're going to move out into the open, into this zone. Gamma's got a choice. If he crits, he could kill the Hacktown and knock him out. Uh, the Omega's all, or the Gamma's also able to fire in ARO. And so, how do we want to do this? Do we shoot or do we dodge? I think we shoot, because otherwise he's going to take this zone, because he's six points. Hacktown's just going to dodge on a 14. Just needs to stay alive here. So dodging on a 14, uh, that's going to be a AP, or sorry, an HMG shot, minus three for range, minus six for mimetism. Although he can shoot him back here, actually, in the open. So he'd be just minus six. So it'll be on an eight versus a 14, and then the Fearbach at plus three minus six um, is gonna be on an 11. So the Fearbach hits for the 10, the, do or the HMG misses, and then the dodge on a 14, 20 fails, takes a round. Oh, this could kill him. So AP plus DA for the Fearbach, damage 15. Uh, armor five goes to three, so he's gonna have to beat a 13 twice. 13 twice, this could be for the game. Fails, fails. He's unconscious. That was the final order of the game. So uh, with him down, that's going to be scoring one, two zones for the O12, um, three zones if we count Hippolyta up here as well, which means they will end up scoring more. Tiger Soldier holding this one over here. Unless Adil is more than Hippolyta. Uh, Hippolyta is three, Adil is two. So we need one more model in the zone there to tie that up. It's going to push uh, O12 to four points. Um, and then they will have two connected consoles for six and one connected console for Yu Ching for three. And so it's six, three, end of the game for 012. So there you go, Domination wrapping up with a six to three victory um, for 012, taking the cops. Uh, and uh, next week you're gonna check out Supplies, the third mission from the Code 1 rulebook, um, which is a sort of smash and grab. You gotta break open some objectives, pull out the supplies inside, and then hold them at the end of the third round uh, to score points and win. That's gonna be 012 versus Pan Oceania. Uh, whatever it was, whatever the contraband was, uh, Pan Oceania is trying to cover it up now, and the cops have 
learned from interrogating Yu Ching um, prisoners that uh, that neither side was up to any good. So we'll see you for that in two weeks. Big thanks for watching. Thanks on Mash. Happy gaming. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Desperate Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.